Do you have a property that you want to make a short-term rental, but some the HOA or the condo association or someone is telling you that you are not allowed to do this? Are you wanting to know how you can get around that, how you can still make it a short-term rental? I'm going to tell you how. Let's go. So let's talk about restrictions on short-term rental properties and how to get around them because so many people have these restrictions and so in this video I'm going to tell you one. I'm going to tell you what restrictions are common and how you can get around them of course. Number two, I'm going to give you the secret way to get around almost all restrictions no matter what. And then number three, I'm going to tell you what to say so that you don't blow it. Short-term rentals are an amazing way to start making money in real estate. Basically, I had lots of rental properties and then I started making them short-term rentals. In other words, renting them out on a per night basis instead of renting them out unfurnished for a whole year or for two years. I started to furnish them, stock them with towels, toilet tissue, and the things that people need. Look around, this is an Airbnb that we're in. And this is how I started to make tons of money and I realized I didn't need as many properties. However, many times you may have a property that is in a condo association or an HOA, a homeowners association, and they have restrictions around what it is that you can do. Or maybe you live in a city or a town where they have banned Airbnb and said they don't want short-term rentals. Well, I'm gonna tell you how to get around that. So before we get into getting around the restrictions, let's first talk about why they exist because I think you need to understand that before you try to get around them. So many times there are HOA covenants or condo covenants that restrict short-term rentals. And the reason why they do that is because they are trying to protect their property from party guests, people throwing events, people coming in and partying like, you know, it's Daytona Beach or something and then trashing the place and leaving. And a lot of times this can be very disruptive to the neighborhood and to other neighbors in the area. And so the reason why they came up with these restrictions really is an admirable reason. But as an entrepreneur, we wanna make money, so we gotta figure out how do we respect what it is that they were trying to do and still make money. That's the key to this. So the key to this is that in most cases, you wanna set up yourself as a business. I know this sounds a little bit crazy, like what difference would it make if I set myself up as a business versus a person? Well, there's a big difference and I'm gonna tell you something that is mind blowing and when I figured this out, oh baby, did I make a lot of money. Well, if you get a property in your business's name, hmm, businesses are not people, right? I think, you know, we had like a guy that told us that businesses and corporations were people and a lot of people started arguing because it's not true. Essentially, a business is a business, but a business does have people. But the great thing about it is, can a business occupy a property? No, a business cannot occupy a property, but you can get a property in the business's name. You can even lease a property in a business's name. Then once you do that, you actually have different rights, okay? And this is amazing, okay? And this is how we rent properties and then literally, legally, and ethically put those properties on Airbnb because we rent the properties in our business's name and then, just by default, a business is not an occupant. You have to then name a person that lives in the property. And so if you then rent the property out to on Airbnb, each guest is just the occupant. And so all you have to do is tell the leasing office or the manager who's residing in the property and you're legal. So again, the key to it is become a business. You must have a real business. You can't just say, hey, I'm a business. You're literally gonna have to get the steps. You're gonna have to get that LLC or that S Corp or that C Corp or whatever it is in your state and become a real business, get a real EIN number and actually be a legitimate business. Then when you go to a seller, a property owner, an apartment complex, you rent the property or you buy the property in the business's name. And that is how we've been able to circumvent a lot of these laws. But at the same time, you have to stay above board 
and just notify them of who is in the property. Just that simple. So let's talk about how you don't blow it because I just told you an amazing secret, but here's where a couple of my students have messed this up and I was able to coach them through it and they fixed it. So the one thing that you want to do, you do not want to go to, you know, the property manager or the property owner and say, Hey, yeah, I'm going to rent this property and then put it on Airbnb. That's a big mistake. Do not tell them that you want to say things like, I have a corporation, I have corporate clients that stay here, I have um, travelers that come here, my clients. You really wanna keep it to your clients because essentially they are your clients. Remember, if someone contracts to stay in your property with your business, they're your guest, they're your client. Now, your relationship with the seller or the owner or the property manager is a little bit separate. And so as long as you don't get into all of that muddiness and start telling them what it is that you're gonna do and how much money you plan on making with their property and all of this crazy stuff, you're probably going to be okay. But you do wanna notify them, but you wanna stay away from terms like Airbnb, vacation rental, short-term rental, you get what I'm saying. You don't want to necessarily tell them all of that, nor do you actually have to. OK, in many cases, you do disclose what your business does. And that's about it. Again, you're legally responsible for the property. But I'm going to tell you a secret. Almost all of the websites that you will put the property on, like Airbnb, HomeAway, blah, blah, blah. Many of them do not care if you actually own the property. They don't. They never ask. They don't. That's like this big hidden secret. They just want to make sure that you have legal right to put people into the property. And so long as you do what I'm saying and you set your business up properly, you will be OK. OK, I have definitely spilled all the tea and told you all of the secrets on how to get around short term rental restrictions. Again, remember that a lot of these restrictions were created for a purpose and you don't want to go in there and then do the thing that they don't want. You don't want to allow people to have a party and events and all of those things. You want to make sure that you restrict those things from your guests as well because you want to honor what the restriction is there for. The only thing is you just want to make sure that you are allowed to make a business and have free enterprise. So this is a win-win for everyone if you do it correctly. If you need more help, you need more coaching on this, go ahead and do my free training. It's noellesfreetraining.com. I'm giving you tons of information, premium training just for you. I just want you to be successful to your success. <laughs>